Okay, what is up? It's currently about half eight in the evening. We are getting a bus to Malaysia from Singapore, which will take us about five to six hours, and we're getting that in just a couple hours. I'm gonna show you what I'm bringing, because we're going for about three to four days. It's gonna be super cool, and I'm excited to go. Yeah! Basically everything I brought for being away for five months. So I've one bag here, that's for all my clothes. I'm not gonna be bringing that because that's staying in Singapore. I'll be bringing that at the end of my travels when I'm going from hostel to hostel and when I'm going to a lot of different countries. For now, we're just gonna be bringing my little tech bag, got my cables, my chargers, all that kind of stuff, a money belt, what's this? That's for my camera, put my camera in there. Here we got my little, um, I guess you call it a bum bag or a fanny pack, keep my phone, my camera, all that kind of stuff. Got my little Adobe Gorilla Pod, got my headphones, got my diary, glasses, sunglasses, hat, yes. Bag here, got my rain jacket, got a few little bits of clothes, got some food in there, ready to go, got some oats, got some fruit, got some nuts, got some seeds, ready to go. I'm going with Morgan and Rachel, the two people I'm staying with in Singapore and there's another group of people we know who are international students and they went over early this morning so we're going to meet them over there probably get to tour a bit of Malaysia with them who knows we'll see what happens I went for a quick little 30 minute nap because I was just super tired because the last few days we had a lot of classes and didn't get a lot of sleep so got a quick half an hour nap I'm gonna sleep on the bus and yeah see you in Malaysia Yeah, on show. What's up, dudes? Right, give you a little note and we pay 10 euro for a bus from Singapore to Malaysia. So that's about six, seven hour journey. And we, it was meant to be a bus, so we like pick seats, everything like that. We get on and it's like a little van. But it's, yeah, we're gonna have a nice time, guys. It's nice and. It's a real cultural experience, you know what I mean? Look, it's chewing gum, Morgan. Morgan is chewing gum. Whoa! <laughs> so, this is the point where we had to cross the border from Singapore to Malaysia, and since we saw chewing gum in the shop, that means we were no longer in Singapore. So, after reaching Malaysia and getting off the bus, we went and got a taxi to our hostel, which cost us about 30 ringgits. That's equivalent of 6 euro in total for a 30 minute taxi ride. Not bad if you ask me. So yeah, our hostel was super chill and the best thing about it was it only cost us about 9 euro each per night. And here we see the mountain of shoes. Dun -dun -dun. So after dropping our bags at the hostel and napping, we went to a fish spa which was right outside our hostel. It was a worthwhile and very tickly experience in my opinion. Okay, okay, go. Cool. Okay, ready? One, two, three, let's do it. Oh! Oh, yes! Oh! <laughs> I'm not quite sure of the ethicality of these kind of spas, but nonetheless, the fish did seem to enjoy eating dead skin from our feet. They love all this skin, man. Jeez. So we spent that evening exploring the local area which included many street markets. And of course we made a stop at a little food court. Morgan critiqued the beer and I got a big plate of veggies and rice. Oh yeah! Dudes, welcome to Malaysia. We got here nice and early in the morning. Um, we got a bus which took us maybe like six, seven hours to get here, and it was all good though, not too bad. Got a couple hours sleep, got the hostel, slept here as well, and did a little bit of exploring for the day. So, yeah, it's gonna be a fun few days. 
keep tuned, man. Here's some of the temples we saw while in Kuala Lumpur, both of which had amazing architecture and decorations. Rachel had to wear some type of dress to cover her knees as a sign of respect, and we saw some pretty cool people here. This is the KL Tower, where we saw the most amazing views of the city and stood on a glass box hundreds of meters above the ground. I got up after 6am and attempted to catch my first sunrise in KL. Didn't really work out, but I certainly learned a lot from it. I also had a pretty good conversation with my driver. Okay, so the Uber is here for the grab. Better go find it. Is it or...? I know, I got here on... Friday morning? Friday morning. Friday morning, so it's last day. Last day. Let's have a look at the photography business now. So I got up early to try and see the sunrise, but it turned out that the sunrise here, I googled it, it said that the sunrise would be at about half seven in the morning, but there was no like clear sunrise, almost like a gradual hour of the sun coming up, but you couldn't actually see the sun. So it was just that the sky was getting brighter. Obviously I was looking for the full effect of like the sun just popping out of nowhere. Didn't happen but it's okay. I didn't really plan the place I was going to. So I googled like places to watch sunrise and this place was rated as like one of the best. But it was very unknown and very hard to get to. So I'll definitely plan it more next time. Yeah. For our last day in Malaysia, we went to see the Batu Caves, a site with a mix of light and dark caves and some temples. It looks even spookier around the day. Seeing the monkeys robbing people's stuff and just being super cheeky, man, it's so worth the visit. Ah, yours. <laughs> so this concludes our trip to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. We were able to get a bus to and from Kuala Lumpur from Singapore for only 20 euros and we stayed in a hostel for only 7 euro a night. This is our first trip since arriving in Singapore and it was certainly one to remember.